in this property of, of supremum, we involve functions. So, the property says that if there is a function f from domain d to a domain d which is a subset of the real numbers, okay, to the range r and also a function g which again has a domain b to r, uh, the range r. Now, d just notice that you have common domain, okay. And what are we given about these two functions? They are bounded functions. They are bounded functions such that, such that fx is always less than or equal to gx for every element in the domain d. Mind you, the domain is same, okay. Mind you, domain is same for both the functions, okay. Now, then, then the result says that supremum of fx, the function that is smaller, is always less than or equal to supremum of gx for all the domain elements. So, what are we actually trying to, you know, say? What are we actually trying to say? So, suppose that we have, okay, we're talking about functions, so we'll have to make, a, we'll have to graphically just see it, what are the functions that we are talking about. Suppose this is the domain, this part of the x-axis is the domain, okay. So, say this is the domain, this is your range, so your f and g will be somewhere here. So, what are we trying to say? We are trying to say that if you have a function f something of this sort and then you have a function g something of this sort, okay. So, what is happening for each, for every domain value, g x is higher than f x, right? g x is higher than f x, okay. It's a bounded domain, so say it's a bounded domain from here. We say the supremum of G is somewhere here and the supremum of F is somewhere here, okay. Suppose this is the highest point here, so supremum. Your supremum of G will always be greater than or equal to the supremum of F and that's what we're going to try to prove mathematically, okay. So that's what we mean by this theorem. That's what we mean by this theorem. Let's just try to prove it mathematically. Now, soup of gx will always be greater than or equal to gx, okay, for all domain values, right? So, supremum of gx will be an upper bound, right? So, it will be greater than or equal to gx for all domain values. Now, what are we given? We are given gx is greater than or equal to fx. We are given that gx is greater than or equal to fx for all x belonging to d. So, this is 1, this is 2. So, 1 and 2 imply something. What do they imply? 1 and 2 imply that supremum of supremum of gx supremum of gx will be greater than or equal to fx is greater than or equal to gx which is greater than or equal to fx so i can say that it is greater than or equal to fx right and that's happening for any x belonging to the domain okay so this means that soup gx supremum of g is an upper bound for fx also for for the function fx okay for fx for all x belonging to the domain, right? And what will that imply? What will that imply? That will imply that supremum of gx will be 
will be greater than or equal to supremum of fx. Why? Because supremum of fx will be the least upper bound. Okay, now g, supremum of gx is also an upper bound. But because supremum of fx will be the least upper bound, sup is the least upper bound, that is why. That is why this theorem will hold. Supremum of gx will always be greater than or equal to supremum of fx.